Shogun. Sweet. Honey. B. Wasp. Juvenile hormone. What? Juvenile hormone is a fundamental hormone in insect physiology. We actually read a paper by Tibbets and Bannon about it. Really? What's the title of the paper? The title is... Advertised quality, cast, and food availability influence the survival cost of juvenile hormone in paper wasps. Oh! Oh! I've read that! Oh! Oh! We have it. Tell us more about this. Juvenile hormone. Isn't that the hormone that regulates growth and reproduction in insects? That's just correct. I also know it increases dominance and reproductivity, but at the same time, it decreases the immune response of the organism, making them more susceptible to death. I learned this from Mom De Vera. So, in a sense, it's like a double-edged sword. It has its benefits and risks. Wait, haven't there been numerous studies detailing the effects of juvenile hormone? What makes this study different from the rest? Well, previous studies only focused on the overall effect of juvenile hormone titers. This study takes note of the influence of individual characteristics, advertised quality, caste, and food availability on the effect of that hormone. Wow, interesting. Can you tell us about their methodology? We'd be happy to tell you about their methodology. But first, let's move to the playground. Let's go! <laughs> yeah. Methodology. First, they collected queen and worker paper wasps. They separated both casts into feeding and non-feeding treatments. And then, wasps were given one of three hormone treatments. Two microliters of acetone as the control, five micrograms of methoprene, and ten micrograms of methoprene. Methoprene behaves similar to juvenile hormone at the cellular level. These two hormones have similar behavioral and physiological effects. Then... Deaths were monitored and counted. After every death, each wasp's face was photographed for pattern analysis. The wasp's facial patterns are the indicators of advertised quality. After experimenting, they subjected the data collected to necessary correlational analysis to determine whether there is a significant relationship between juvenile hormone and advertised quality, cast, and food availability. One thing they found out is juvenile hormone affected survival in a dose-dependent manner. Ah, so a higher exposure to juvenile hormones would kill more wasps. It's correct. But that isn't really the meat of the study. It's a bit tricky, so listen carefully. They found that juvenile hormone generally reduced the survival of both queens and workers. But they noticed the degree of effect was not the same for all individuals. The effect varied with food availability, caste, and advertised quality. Firstly, because queens and workers possess different physical characteristics, their survival responses would also be very different. Workers are frail and utterly replaceable in a colony and are less able to endure periods of starvation than queens. Because of this, the effect of starvation overpowers the effect of juvenile hormone on survival. This is reflected in the lack of correlation between juvenile hormone concentration and survival among unfed workers. They died not because of juvenile hormone, but because of starvation. But for fed workers, since the problem of starvation is removed, the effect of juvenile hormone will manifest itself more obviously. On the other hand, queen wasps are much tougher since they must endure long periods of stress and starvation in the wild during nest foundation. So, since starvation does not have much effect on the survival of queens, the effect of juvenile hormone is evident and remains dose-dependent regardless of whether queens are fed or not. But what about advertised quality? Well, wasps... Advertising high quality survived better than those advertising lower quality. High advertised quality is represented by broken facial patterns, while those with low advertised quality is represented by solid facial patterns. I don't get it. It's simple. Sorry. 
Think of the facial pattern as a wasp's mask it uses to scare enemies away. If the mask appears more jagged and messy, rivals are more frightened by it. As a result, these wasps have better chances for survival in the wild and are said to possess high advertised quality. That is a bit irrelevant for this study. How is a scary mask going to help them in surviving juvenile hormone titers? Good question! Facial patterns have more value than you think. Like, facial patterns are actually associated with the wasp's larval feeding in adult conditions. Which means that the... The facial pattern represents the actual health and physical condition of the wasp. The more broken it is, the healthier the wasps are. And the more capable they are to survive and endure stress. Wait, wait! Can we sum everything up? So first, juvenile hormone reduces the survival of wasps in a dose-dependent manner. More juvenile hormone kills more wasps. But individual characteristics affect the juvenile hormone effect. So meaning queens are generally tougher than workers. Thus, queens are able to survive starvation and juvenile hormone stress better than workers. Advertised quality is represented by facial patterns. Those with broken patterns signal high quality. Thus, they are able to survive longer than those wasps with solid facial patterns, which represent low quality. Juvenile hormone. Polistes dominulus. Signal elaboration. Endocrine mediated response. Wait, wait, we're late for Mom Devera's class. Mom Devera's class? Mom Devera's class? Mom Devera's class. Mom Devera's class? Let's go! Mm -hmm.